Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, Landon Porter, who is so much more than just the Sales Gorilla. And today we're going to be, we're going to be maybe diving into the woo. We'll let you decide. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm pretty good today, Nathan. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's been an awesome day and we do back-to-back recordings. The last episode was a blast and this episode, you sent me over the notes and this one looks like it's going to be a blast as well. So let's not make the listeners wait any longer. What are we going to be talking about today? Let's talk about the skill set of mindset. Mm, Okay. Okay. So we were talking before we started recording and I asked you if you had read a book or if you were familiar with a book, and this is a book that was one of those kind of mind blowing books when I went through it, it's called psycho cybernetics. Mm -hmm. And you said that you were, and you actually had a little bit more uh, kind of knowledge, but it wasn't super concise because I kind of hit you out of nowhere with the question, but psycho cybernetics for the people that don't know what it is, Uh, You had a better understanding of it than I did, and I wanted to kind of start the episode off with, um, where does this whole topic come from? Well, this is actually one of those episodes where we lose people who have been listening and no longer come back to listen. This is also one of those episodes where the people that are actually listening, that are paying attention, that dig this, begin to really start paying attention. So, I have my entire life been fascinated with the question of what is it? How does it work? How can I make it work for me? And how can I become it? And what I mean by it is leveraging the thing between my ears to become who I want to be, to have what I want to have, to do in life what I want to do, and basically leverage my mind and whatever else you want to call that to make my life the way I want it. And if you look at mindset in this, in this space, entrepreneurism, business owners, there's a lot of people that say mindset's everything. Mindset's 98%, skill set's 2%. Yes. And if you're struggling in any area of your business, you've got a mindset issue. And people just kind of leave it like, well, you can get to fix your mindset, right? There's all these, there's an entire industry dedicated to helping people with their mindset. It's called personal development, right? 200 years ago, it wasn't called personal development. It was called spirituality or science. And if we look at all of that shit today on a spectrum, you've got science all the way on one end and fanatical religion all the way on the other end and everything in between. I think we're all talking about the same thing, it, from different positions on that spectrum. We've all got our own perspectives and what we know and things that we've concluded and assumptions and shit that people, when we were little kids told us, we've got our belief systems. And so we see this thing, it, from our own position on that spectrum. Psycho-cybernetics is essentially a roadmap to use your thinking mind to make your life what it is that you want it to be. And what is known is that we have a mind that is conscious and present and aware, and we've got a mind that is not, right? I'm not going to get into the details on this, but essentially most of us are walking around unconscious on a regular basis. And all of the stuff that we learn how to do, whether it's good for us or bad for us, that eventually becomes habitual, we do automatically. And in many cases, we do a lot of that shit without ever even knowing that we do that shit cool. So the skill set of mindset, mindset, the ability to think for ourselves, the ability to design our personality, to become who we want to become is absolutely a skill set. You can learn how to do all of those things and you can put some kind of weird spiritual moniker on it or label if you want. You can use current neuroscience science to like back it up and prove it. At the end of the day, it comes down to what Henry Ford said. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are correct. 
And the truth of the matter is, is based on what you think you can, is possible, you're allowed to, you deserve, all of that is kind of how your life is structured. So my thing is, is that mindset is a skill set. It's all mindset, not 98%. It's all mindset. Therefore, it's all a skill set or a set of skills that we can learn. Man, there's so many different ways to take this conversation. I'm going to go to my conspiracy theory mind real quick. And I'm going to ask you your thoughts on, it seems like a lot of us are programmed to believe that we can hit certain limits, that we can accomplish certain things, and that the people that go beyond those are special people. The people that are multimillionaires, they have something that makes them different than the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And when we go through education, when we go through uh, the programming of the media, even society, it's like you marry people that are in your same socioeconomic class, and you don't try to go above these self-imposed or societally imposed or educationally imposed glass ceilings. My question is, because having studied this and having gone through a lot of the stuff that me and you have been working on together behind the scenes for my own life, I've seen that breaking through one glass ceiling just lets me look at the next one and say, okay, how do I get past that one? And how do I get past that one? And it seems like to actually achieve things in life, so much of it comes down to what you believe, yet we spend 14 years, 12 years, some of us drop out early, but we spend years and years and years being taught to not believe that we can get past these. Why does our education system do that to us? Ooh, that's a deep question. The short answer is, is our current education system as a whole in the Western world is set up to turn people into factory workers. That's not conspiracy theories. That's not bullshit. That's legit. When we went through the industrial revolution, the education system was created and turned into a system to generate people who would follow orders and get shit done. And that's essentially what our education system is. But it's not just that. It's our parents and our grandparents and the people that grew up in the same neighborhoods that we did. It's the people that went to the church that we went to or the Boy Scouts or whatever. We've basically been programmed to be who we are. And some of our thoughts are our own. Some of our ideas and our concepts and our beliefs are our own. The vast majority are conclusions or false and useless assumptions that we've just kind of taken on from being nurtured into who we are. Um, I think really where that goes is it doesn't matter what other people think of you. And it doesn't matter what you think of your upbringing or the situation that you're in. What it comes down to is your belief in your ability to learn new and different stuff and to try. And Going through that process builds confidence. You learn things. And by, by building confidence, doing new things and thinking about new things, you begin to formulate your own belief in yourself that eventually will outpace the beliefs that are deep-seated that you have about life and what you're going to get and all of that. There's a lot more to that, but it comes down to this. What you think about, how you think of yourself is what matters. I'll say it again because it, it's, it's kind of a weird sentence. What you think about, how you think about yourself is what matters, right? If somebody else has an opinion on me or you or whatever, cool. That only actually matters insofar as what we think that means about us. And really at the end of the day, if somebody says or does or acts a certain way towards us, we get to decide if it's, if it's important or not, right? Like last episode, people pleasing, right? Obligating ourselves to do shit that we don't want to do. Why? You're a fucking grown up. You can actually make your own decisions now. Will you, right? That's the question. That's what this comes down to. What we think about how we think about ourselves and how we feel about how we feel about ourselves is really the key to being able to do whatever the fuck you want. 
And it's so simple that people just step right over it because they're like, eh, there's no way that's the answer. Guess what? It is. <laughs> so pretty much everybody listening is probably going to fit into the latter category that I'm going to go into right now. But we've, it seems like there's two different types of people and the former category is going to vastly outnumber the latter category. So there's one group of people that they go through their entire lives, never self-examining, never questioning if anything better is possible, maybe dreaming about winning the lottery or getting a better promotion at work, but never actually taking their life into their own hands. They wake up, they get the kids ready for school, they go to work, they come home, they watch TV, they get dinner ready, they fall asleep. They wake up, they do the exact same thing every single day until they retire. They retire, they have no purpose in life, they die a year and a half after they retire. And that is the path for 99.9% .9 of people. Even though books like Cyper, Cy, Psycho Cybernetics exist, even though books like Think and Grow Rich exist, even though people like uh, Napoleon Hill and people like um, all, all of the like great thinkers that have talked about mindset, all of that stuff's available. Today, we live, where, we live in a world where it's all accessible and, in, in your pocket. And yet 99.9% .9 of people never pull out their phone and look that stuff up. What is it that causes that spark in the people that are listening to this show that sets them apart from the vast majority of the other zombies walking around out there? I think it comes down to a question, something close to, is this really all there is to life? And eventually questioning that and themselves enough to go, how come that person has a life that looks like that? How come that person has a relationship that seems like that? How come that person's whatever seems to be blah, 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 and mine's not? And I think through, through questioning, why is my life the way that it is, when they're able to be honest with themselves, and if they get the notion that it's not destiny, you've just been pre-programmed with all of this bullshit software that's not even actually yours. You didn't really choose it. Um, people begin to wake up. And I'm not talking about woke. I'm talking about fucking waking up to the fact that they're an adult and they have the ability to make decisions in their life and their life currently in many ways is not structured as though they actually critically thought about something, planned it out, took action steps to make it what it is, and they've essentially created a life that is not really of their making, right? So with that said, I actually think there's a lot more people than... 0.01% of the population, I would say 100% of the population to an extent is walking around unconscious, carrying out pre-built software processes that don't 100% suit their lives. And everybody is from that point down to where they're actually thinking consciously, making decisions, creating different belief systems for, their, for themselves. Um, and I think now more than any time in recorded history that we've got books that we can read about how things were, I think there's more and more and more people that are starting to kind of figure that out. I think my take is that's why there's so much disconnection and disorderliness in our world is because people are kind of starting to figure it out. Like, what do you mean I don't have to drive across town and work for somebody else? I can actually do my own thing and leverage the skill sets I've learned to fund my life, right? Like that's a very basic one. I think most people listening to this show can comprehend. We're all on that path somewhere, becoming aware of what and who we are, right? And I think, I think I booted somebody out of my fucking world, like not even two weeks ago. And I hope he's kind of listening to this. Here's a, here's a little bonus for you guys. This language thing that you're listening to, my words in your ears right now, everything that I'm saying is a culturally agreed upon label to demonstrate a specific meaning. Labels 
such as words, can't effectively communicate the entirety of the meaning that we are actually feeling. But to be able to communicate in an effective and efficient manner, we've created this thing we call language. That language that you have that you use to express your meaning and your feelings, each and every one of those labels carries with it much more than what most of us are aware of. Go ahead and put the fucking label on it that it's woo-woo. Cool. To the extent that you believe that in your own being, this will or won't work for you to that extent. Go ahead if you're all woo-woo and place the label of neuroscience and science on it and to the extent that you believe that and what you mean by that, it will or won't work for you. This little concept of language that all of us take so for granted carries so much more oomph behind it. When we say a thing, it causes us to think and feel a certain way. And most of us are not conscious of that. If we can change how we talk about things and how we talk to ourselves, and re-examine what our labels about things mean to us, you can call it magic if you want to. The bottom line is you can do, be, and have anything you want as long as you think you can. And the crazy thing about this is, and I don't want to get like all political, but during the enlightenment, new ideas popped up and new words and new concepts and the sovereignty of the individual and self-ownership and these ideas that never existed before people never could even imagine owning themselves. And then all of a sudden somebody says, here's a new concept. And then it catches like wildfire and then society is altered by it. And then relationships are altered by it. And we've seen so many times where, if you can keep someone from knowing a concept or knowing a word, you can limit their ability to achieve that particular thing. And if you can open up their language and open up the words and open up the way that they talk to themselves, now they're able to accomplish so much more. And now that you can conceive it and believe it, you can actually achieve it and, and it opens up the doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, like really what more is there to add to that? That's essentially what it comes down to. Everything you automatically believe, you have the ability to decide to believe something different. But because so much of what we believe about ourselves and how we fit in the world and how the world works for us, and that's for those special people, but not for me, all of that shit is conditioning. We've been turned into a personality. We weren't really guided in the understanding of choosing how to develop our personality. Well, you're all fucking adults, right? If you're a little kid listening to this, I hope you've got an awesome little business. We're all adults walking around basically as unconscious elementary school kids. We have the ability to choose what we think and how we feel, but very few of us actively, consciously, take control of that yeah we're we're very much stimulus response creatures something happens and we react to it without even thinking and just taking that extra two seconds to think about how am i going to react to this how am i going to let my response be to this particular stimulus uh totally drastically different outcomes that you can get out of life so Let's wrap this up. Um, I, we've kind of went all over the place. Is there a direction that you wanted to end this episode with? Off the fucking deep end. <laughs> um, I, w one, last, one last thing, and I, I think we'll wrap it up with this. You are either reacting or you're responsible. And all of us are both reacting and responsible in different areas of our life. Here's the difference. When something happens and we automatically react in our thinking, our feeling, our taking actions, we're not in control of our lives. Responsibility actually means having the ability to respond, meaning thinking and feeling and deciding beforehand. That's the difference, right? Either the world and everybody else in it's controlling you or you're controlling yourself. One or the other, pick. It doesn't matter. 
but it does. Okay, Landon. The people that we lost on this episode, I feel sorry for them, but man, this was this was a refreshing and not 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 what I expected when we jumped on the call, but man, I loved this conversation because it's something that I don't think that people in sales talk about enough. Well, you know, 10 years ago, it was not a common thing to leverage Facebook to generate sales and money and have a business. In fact, 10 years ago, you couldn't do it, right? Like nobody knew about it. Now it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, kind of the same idea in sales, right? 20 years ago, what do you mean relationship marketing? Like, fuck that, I'm going to call this guy and I'm going to close him. I'm going to take his head off, right? And now the entire society is kind of waking up to, oh, there's other ways to sell things. It's the same idea. Here's what I'd say. If you're still listening to this episode and you're not ready to unsubscribe from it and you dig this kind of thing, send me an email and let me know that you actually want to hear more about this. Nathan wasn't certain that heading in this direction, talking about these things was really something that you guys wanted to hear about. And I'm totally throwing him under the bus and looking at him right now. If you're interested in this, send me an email at lp at thesalesgorilla.com and say, heard the episode, mindset is a skill set. I want more. And if we don't get any emails on it, you'll know because we'll stop talking about it. I think I'm going to keep pushing you to talk about it. Even, even I'm taking this podcast down because this is, you've sold me. This is the route that I want to go on. Uh, at least, at least, uh, at least travel down some of these side roads. So thank you for that. And uh, if you, the listener want to get more episodes and you want to subscribe to the podcast, salesgorillapodcast.com is where you can do it. And until next time, Landon, I will catch you later, man. Peace out, Cub Scouts. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I really don't like, and I know it's mutual. Peace out.